Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I'm, I'm having a little bit of internet problem here today, so um, I don't actually know if this is working because I can't get Facebook up. But I've started streaming anyway, um, just to just in case it's all working okay. I'm waiting for the page to load so I can see if it's see if it's working. But um, anyway, uh, <coughs> whilst I'm waiting, um, welcome, <laughs> welcome to your weekly Yoga Solutions Live on this glorious winter day, 15th of December, 2020. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic time wherever you are. Um, yes, let, let's get on, um, well, uh, I, I, let's get on with the content. Um, if I can find it, I had a question from um, um, one of my long-term students, uh, uh, Mark, uh, Hughes, he, he's a fantastic man. Uh, I really like him, consider him my friend. Um, uh, about energy centers, and I'm trying to, um, I'm waiting for the page to load up so I can see what the question is. Um, <clears throat> I, I think it was around practical engagement, uh, practical use of, un, of an understanding of what the energy centers are, I think. And uh, there, was a, there was an additional question around um, sound. Uh, vibration, I think. So, um, <clears throat> if <clears throat> if I don't get um, if I don't get the page loaded up soon, I'm going to have to um, just guess what he was talk uh, asking about. I, I think I think it was along those lines. Um, energy centers. So, um, whilst I'm waiting for the page to load, um, what's this? Hang on a sec. Uh, just check on, on online and everything. Uh, yeah, okay. So um, there was no there was no message saying that I'm I'm not working yet. So um, I shall trust the tech despite the absence of internet. Um, yes. What, what was I saying? Yes, energy centers. Uh, there's a uh, there's a lot of. Uh, Hoo ha! <laughs> There's a lot of mystery and um, ar around uh, the energy centers, so what chakras mean and the rest of it. Um, <clears throat> it sort of uh, there, there seems to be basically two camps: th those that dismiss it as woo-woo stuff that is uh, not to do with um, modern scientific understanding of things. Um, between those people and those that, uh, through experience, um, feel it to be significant and an important aspect of things. Um, I'm neither of those. I'm both. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't. I, I understand the propensity for it being woo-woo, as in um, the the mind can Im imagine anything, um, and it, and yes, my you know. Uh, on a deeper level, who you are and um, your body are not necessarily the same thing on a on an essential level. Uh, but um, in reality, um, who you are, as in the personality, the 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 kind of person that has developed with your life history and everything else that is sort of outside of your essential self and your body are one. Um, they are not different things. So um, what am I saying? Yes, and uh, the energy centers. Um, the energy centers are a kind of reflection of that um, physical manifestation uh, and and the link between the two, the uh, as in, I, I consider the energy centers to be physical spaces within the body. So um, your discernment, your ability to interpret um, the sensory signals that you receive, your third eye, it, it's your brain. It, it's a space. It's a space within you that. Um, is a vital part of your experience of being. But as is your relationship to expression, your throat, um, your, um, 
your ability to express what it is that you wish to happen, uh, your ability to manifest. Um, it's a space. It's a space within you that, uh, if restricted, um, it restricts how you interact with the world in a real way. Um, your 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 heart and your lungs, the 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 vital driving force for life. You know, uh, your your ability to receive life and 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 let go, and um, the heart's desire at the center of it. Uh, driving your actions, driving your motivations, and then there's the, um, the this space, uh, the space underneath it, underneath the diaphragm, uh, the solar plexus, otherwise known as. It's um, <clears throat> you know it contains uh, some most of your vital organs uh, that, to do with processing, and it's um, you know the center of the kind of center of your essential, uh, or who you are as a person, essentially, you know, um, it's uh, the, the center of confusion, it's the center of action, in many ways, it's the, um, it's the physical center as well. And, and, and so sort of interferences to these areas um, will interfere in your experience of life. And, um, and uh, if we can keep going, the, the, the lower belly area, this, um, it, it sort of represents the, your, um, uh, well, uh, structurally, if you're, if you're held in this area, it, there, there, there's control uh, as opposed to freedom, as opposed to free, uh, free expression, free creativity. And it's kind of another vital life source. Uh, you're in, in women. It's where you create life, you know, and um, yes, uh, and interferences in this area will interfere with your experience of life and your root, your um, your sense of support, uh, the, everything that has come before you. You know, they, these all have um, practical kind of manifestations on the effect of your experience of life uh, they are all kind of aspects of consciousness if you like um, it, it, consciousness is not just something that lives in your brain otherwise uh, you wouldn't be bothered by feelings of hunger and fear and other things you know so so it's um but i i kind of understand the um energetic system in terms of it's related to who you are as a human being uh, of course, of course it is, and they are real spaces, uh, exception root and crown, they kind of relate to space beyond you, but um, they are spaces within the body that need support, and they need to be free to function as they are meant to function, <clears throat> and that, and the, and the bridge between that um, idea and the physical is is real as in um whether they are supported or not is dependent on physiology on 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 the way you move the way you support yourself the way you engage with life the way you breathe and these kind of energetic centers are moved by the breath they move with the breath um so obvious one being the lungs you know the lungs and the heart there's a there's a there's a filling and then there's a deflation towards the center and without that you wouldn't be alive but um and, but with complications in that then then how you feel at your heart level will be complicated uh, like any other part of you but so on a physiological level the, it's the breathing linked in with how we engage with the world or our support and the space that we occupy um, that potentially gives that area the support it needs to function as it should uh, and and this is a real thing and so but where those places are uh, they're, they're not the actual spaces themselves they're they're the kind of junctions between the spaces so um uh, this is proper chakra ma master class I, ho I hope this is okay so um for example the the heart um, lives within the rib cage and the, uh, lives above the 
um, diaphragm, the lungs do as well, and the and below the throat. Um, so, uh, you know, if if you think about the intersections between chakras, the point the the points that they might uh, meet and relate to each other, um, those are places that need um, grounding. They need they need to be anchored to the ground so that the spaces above the space uh, above the base of that chakra um, is supported um, so so you you need to be uh, and that's what that's what what i'm i'm talking about when i'm inviting people to center somewhere um, the if you're in your heart you will be in your breath and you will be sort of living in that uh, space, observing from that space, uh, relating from that space. But in order to be able to do so in reality, then the physical support for that needs to be present. As in, underneath it, the breathing response is underneath it, directly at the top of the diaphragm there. Um, that space, when you, re when you release the breath particularly, when it comes together, it needs to feel like it's a it's a released relationship to the earth um, we, we all know you know if you can't breathe out it's very very stressful and when you can't breathe out it's because you're held up you know, you're, you're, you know you're working to hold yourself up so the muscles of that get involved with releasing breath can't do their job but when your breath is related to the earth then the the same muscles get involved um, uh, that that get involved with the release of the breath, get involved with the ground, so it feels like you release tension and you are supported at the heart. So, so there's a difference between the thing I'm trying to get across is there's a difference between the chakras, the spaces that you are within, that that sort of uh, give you your experience of yourself, and the f the kind of um, physical points of support. That need to be present for those areas to be free to function. Um, a, a, a crossover point would be the navel. Yeah, uh, most people have um, some sort of idea of of the lumbar spine as something you have to have this way or that. You know, but um, what we need is not a holding pattern that because holding patterns would restrict both the space below and the space above. But what we need is support support that uh, that allows these two areas to function freely within the within movements of breathing and for you to feel supported uh, the spine essentially so you know if you if you um let's make this a bit practical um uh, yeah maybe we can just sit let's see so if, if this solar plexus area between say the seat of it is the, around the navel and the top of it is around the uh, the floor of the heart, uh, the, the top of the diaphragm. Um, and uh, you know, uh, with with age, um, with uh, middle age, middle age spread, we tend to lose the the base of this. Well, men do quite often um, tend to lose the base of this chakra, and we end up with a beer belly. You know. Um, and that would involve, instead of being supported at the base of the, sa of the solar plexus chakra, at the top of the sacral plexus chakra, instead of having support, we have the spine given the job of carrying your weight. And you end up with a kind of slightly distorted space where your creativity and, and your um, sense of self kind of merge into a kind of single block rather than supporting and feeding each other uh, it's a bit bit of a broad kind of um, energetic <laughs> explanation of things but uh, if we want to get, bring it back to the practical if um, from this space uh, from this sort of junction between the space above and the space below so from the navel if through breathing and release you can find a kind of sense of released support to the ground then um, the space above is free to breathe without without restriction um, if, if you're taught to pull that back and hold it back 
then all you're doing is kind of holding the area and restricting function. And uh, you, you can try it. Just you can pull your navel back. Your pelvic floor will pull up with that probably because uh, these these places kind of relate to each other. Um, and if you hold that, you'll feel supported. You'll feel supported, but the breath will be shallow, and and the the sort of movements of breathing in both areas will be restricted. So you will have a restricted experience of yourself. Um, what we need is a breathing relationship to the ground. So a, a, a way of finding this, if, you, if you're sitting, if sitting is not comfortable for you, I apologize. Um, you, you could try kneeling. That, that might be easier. Um, but uh, the idea is, first of all, this is my sort of gen, general approach of how to find support and space together. Um, if you try taking your weight away from, let's say, the right hand side for a moment, so that this side is free of the ground, okay? Uh, when you do that, what happens, uh, you know, where do you give your weight when you give it to the this left side here? So it kind of depends how you do it. If, if you decide that everything above here is heavy and wants to hang off that place, then that's okay. You know, you, you'll end up with space on the right-hand side as you lean over. But there'll be a holding pattern. You, you, you'll feel yourself kind of holding yourself together because you're about to fall over. If, on the other hand, as you take your weight over to the left, you allow yourself to be with space on the left, then you kind of have more of a, um, a three-dimensional relationship to life, as in you're not just giving up and hanging over to the ground you're using your contact where you're giving your weight to be in space which is a kind of a more um, alive thing to be doing so so instead of hanging over here to put your weight onto your left you bring your weight over as you engage with space on the left okay so quite complicated it might seem but the whole point is to get a sense of how from this central area across the navel you'll have a kind of connection to the ground underneath the uh, left sit bone because that's where you're, you're, you are centering. You're centering underneath the solar plexus chakra. You are centering above the, the sacral plexus chakra. Okay? Um, and the, the, the junction, the center of the, the navel and the center of the lumbar spine will be kind of centered over that sit bone so that you can stay where you are you know so you can balance so you'll have a grounded relationship from that place which allows you to be in space which allows that this side of the solar plexus to be fully um, breathing that allows this side of the heart this side of the throat this side of the head to fully receive the breath from the ground and if you continue to relate to earth and space on this left hand side as you release the breath the place that you will release the breath from can be this center so you remain anchored and all the core responses kick in and you'll feel it on this opposite side you'll feel the the belly muscles working you feel the ribs working so you have a kind of um, the base of the solar plexus and the top of the sacral plexus. Um, this, this junction between chakras will be grounded and the result is below it and above it can breathe because of that support. And the support will be uh, physically uh, being organized uh, by um just checking this is working uh, by by the uh, musculature of breathing over here <sighs> when you release the breath these muscles work okay so that, that that's one side if you do the other side you take your weight onto the right and allow yourself to be in space on the right then uh from the base of the sacral plex uh, uh, the base of the sh the solar plexus you can anchor into the ground on the right but breathe into be with space on that side 
as you, and as you release the breath, you stay in space and you are supported from underneath the chakra, leaving this area free to, uh, and everything above it, free to um, exist and, and be and breathe and function. Um, do I need to be on one side for this area to relate to the earth? Well, no, because they are breathing responses. So, um, so if, if you come onto one side, uh, we can get into the physicality of what's going on in terms of actual, uh, you know, what's the physiology of support. Um, the, the, the center is the navel and that's on the ground. Uh, on this side, you are exposed to space on this side. It is these ribs and the deep core muscles within the abdom uh, abdominal area with the release of the breath, they kind of drop and anchor to assist the release of the breath. There's a coming together feeling that goes with being on that side, that goes with that sit bone. So you basically you come together between my, your left ribs and your right sit bone. They, they come together as a, they, they come together as a result of the release of the breath. Um, and somehow the space between them is not compromised. It's not being pushed forward. That's because you have space. Okay. So that's one side. But what about this side, the side that's off the ground? Well, at the moment, these things, your left sit bone and your right ribs are kind of away from each other. It's the left sit bone is coming up. Um, possibly f it feels like it's lifted by the work of the left ribs, but the left sit bone is coming up. What we need is the right ribs to come down to meet it. And you can do that just by deciding to breathe on this side. And when you, before you release the breath, you kind of get these ribs, you get the core, you, you, you invite something from within to anchor across in order for these ribs and this sit bone to relate. Now, if you had the ground there, it would be simple. You're, you're simply drop in that direction. But because you haven't got the ground there, what you need is support. So I would use what I'm touching the ground with, which is the foot of that leg, the foot of the leg with the sit bone high. So if I engage with my touch, which is one of my sort of main uh, instructions, if I engage with the touch on this side, on my uh, left side, whilst leaning out into space on the right, if I engage with that touch, that gives me a point of support from which the sit bones are being sent up. And also, so the sit bone can be kind of feel supported in that direction rather than lifted. Then when I release the breath, I can give the release of the breath from this right side to my left touch. And the result is those ribs come together with that sit bone and I come back. I haven't lost the grounding on that side, but I can also find grounding on this side. So via the navel, the upper body is kind of relating to the ground underneath me in a crisscross style through the navel, which leaves everything above it free to function and be in space and everything below it free to breathe and remain grounded. So I am now centered in my navel and able to be in any aspect of the space above or any aspect of the space below. So physically I am centered in the navel, but I can be in my solar plexus, I can be in my heart, I can be in my throat, I can be in my third eye. Depends on other complications. You know? So let, let's, um, let's see if that um, can be translated into anything else. Let's stand up. So I, I, the, the page never load up, loaded up, so I hope my question is being um, uh, I hope uh, Mark's question is being answered here. Um, I remember he had he said something about vibration and sound. I, I might get onto that if I get time. 
So um, a practical use, so especially when you stand. Um, and with middle age, it's quite, a, quite often a thing that we, we let go of the navel. And, um, and, and it's, not, it's not wrong, it's just that uh, that puts the job of support into the lumbar spine. Um, and you could get the idea I have to walk around with my belly sucked in as a result. No, no. Um, you might need to be prepared to reorganize things, but in order for the cent if, if if we're dealing with the lumbar curve and the hips and the you know uh, any any issues around the base of the spine, you kind of need to be supported from the center of the navel. Um, and how how do we do this? We can we can do the same sort of thing. You can bring your weight onto uh, your left foot. I would use the right foot already to help bring you away from the ground, like we did the um, uh, second side. So what you've got is a relationship to the ground on the left from the navel, and if you land on that foot to breathe, the navel won't puff up because it is grounded. Yeah? Um, if you land on that foot to breathe and it does puff up, it's because you're not grounded from the navel, you're grounded from the center of the spine. So what, what you need is to ground from within, not from the surface. So if you can get a sense of landing the navel or the space behind it on the foot as you breathe, then the breath will arrive below it and the breath will uh, arrive above it. So you, you can engage with the space on the left hand side. Having done that, you've got this um, opposite sit bone coming up away from the ground and you've got these ribs out in space. So how, how are we going to get that to uh, right itself? Well, you can uh, use that right foot to give the ribs on the opposite side somewhere to land. And that's the base of the heart, essentially, floor of the heart, top of the solar plexus. And if those ribs find support in the right foot, then, and these ribs have found support in the left foot through via the navel, then when you replace that heel, there can be a sense of support that travels through the navel, leaving the space underneath it free to breathe and the space above it free to breathe. And centering happens in the navel. So there's no need to hold anything. You won't, you won't need to hold your spine or anything else if you can center in the junction between those two chakras. Um, the reason I talked about this one particularly is because it's kind of the center of, uh, if, if you're supported in the solar plexus, then you are physically supported. And when you're physically supported, then uh, the person gets to feel that support more. Uh, other areas between throat and heart is a big area of complication for most people. It's why people have neck problems, shoulder problems. Uh, and it's to do with the, uh, the spine behind the heart being not free to be moved by the breath. Uh, and the thoracic spine becomes stiff. And, um, uh, you know, so, so I, can, I can go through the whole thing, but I've only got uh, another minute or so. Um, that was just to give you an idea. Now, um, sound. Okay. Let, um, this is where mantra comes in. You know, um, when you make a sound, obviously it's to do with the release of the breath. When the release of the breath is centered, um, when the release of the breath is centered in support at a junction between chakras, then the, the vibration of the thing um, can vibrate the space that you are in. So, um, you know, as singers talk, you talk about um, singing from the diaphragm. Uh, and uh, and if you if you if you find support from underneath the diaphragm as you as you are voicing as you are vibrating in the throat, 
then you'll have the solar plexus and throat kind of resonating together. And the outcome generally is that the space between those things um, gets the benefit. Um, I'll give you an example. It, if uh, a, a common, when, when, when I, uh, back in the day when we used to be able to go to workshops live, and like, I'd always chant at the end because it's, it's a nice thing to do and get people to on together. Um, the first OM is quite often a sort of a leaking out of air. Um, and it has no oomph to it. It has, no, it has nothing to it. But uh, I get people to do buzzing breath. Um, and you can try this if you like. Um, if, you, if you make a buzzing sound, um, that's kind of, you're, you're trying to uh, imitate a bee or something. And zzz, there's, a, there's a pressure that happens um, from the inner support. And the, 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 the drive will make you grounded. So from that, from that place that you feel the drive of that buzz, it sort of gives you a sense of a base. And the, uh, because it's powerful, it um, it vibrates within you, and you can choose where to resonate. It's um, subtle changes in pressure and and, and shape of voice and that, uh, shape shape of voice box and that sort of thing will move it around, and you can move it around any part of you. You can bring it up into your head, you can bring it down to your root. So um, that's a good sort of um, start to how to engage with the voice and making sort of random random notes so you're not fixed in trying to sing and if you as you change pitch you can move it around okay um when you've got that central drive when you found that from the from the brahmari breath the buzzing breath you've got an idea of how to engage uh, with toning and um, once you've got that drive you simply need to allow the the whole body to express the vowel of the vowels and the consonants of um, the the mantra that, or the chant that you're going to engage with and the, the most commonplace understand uh, understood one is is the sound om which has is is broken up into um, three parts: the a, o, m, om, 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 a, o, m. There's, there's three three parts, and the the the, the first part um, kind of has the shape of a. You know, a. The the jaw is open. The uh, and relaxed the heart is open and you can kind of get a sense of centering in the heart with the sound ah 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 and if if it's um, just a heavy release of pressure it doesn't do anything ah <laughs> it's weak but if it's sourced in this kind of central drive ah if you use your ground um for the for the support of the thing then you can feel the openness of the first vowel um as it transforms into o or u it internalizes and centralizes and for me it feels more like um a drive from the so uh, you're resonating in the solar plexus so it feels like it's heart solar plexus to me, um, it doesn't really matter which way around it is. Uh, that that might be what I need, you know. So, um, in the change of sound, you kind of uh, move from the from without to within is the general feeling. Ah, uh, use the ground. So, so, so the, the the sound moves from the outside to the end, and it's driven from these sort of central places between chakras.
if you like. The last part, the, the mm, is the bit where you travel through yourself. Um, it's a bit more like the dzzz, it's more internalized and you can sort of bring the thing even closer to the center. Okay, so uh, this is a bit of a Christmas thing. Uh, I've gone over way over time, but never mind. Um, so the whole of Om is A or M, mm, and if you can ground with it, if you can use the ground for the, the sort of pivot of your sound, um, then you'll feel the power of it. And um, so let, 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 let me just do it a few times, and you can try it with me if you like. So, because I've been talking, I'm not quite in the wholeness of the thing. So, a celebratory breath across the heart. Uh, I like to use the word sitkari. Uh, just to arrive in my center. You can begin the drive with a few buzzing noises. And then when you've got the feel of the, the buzz, which travels more through the center, you can have a go at opening your mouth. And I'll do three. And uh, <laughs> that's the reason I, I enjoy it. It's um, total focus, it's total presence to the breath and its release, driven from the earth, um, moving from the space without to the space within so that you can move through the spine from earth to heaven and from heaven to earth. And uh, so the whole of my yoga practice can be described by the sound OM. Um, yeah, uh, the, what I like about the, um, these things is that w w whatever sort of weird and wonderful aspect of yoga practice um, you apply yourself to, if you find practical, physical um, engagements that really relate to the earth that we are on, and the space that we are within in a real way in a direct physical way then the body will show you what is meant <laughs> by the thing uh, the, the body is direct gives you direct sensory experience of the stuff that is talked about as opposed to the mind constructing these ideas and kind of superimposing them on experience, which is the more common way of thinking about things. So I went way over time, but that's okay. I'm considering this a Christmas special. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, next uh, I have, um, there's the last Saturday morning retreat workshop of the year, this coming up this Saturday. Uh, I'm I am very much needing a sabbatical. I've, I've been going non-stop since first lockdown, 
and um, I'm I'm starting to go a bit bonkers with it. I know it's time for me to retreat. So uh, after next Saturday, I'm going to have some time off until the new year. So do come along for the last uh, Saturday morning flow retreat for of the year. Uh, all welcome, and I build the theme of the uh, workshop based on the needs of the participants. So, so come along and bring whatever you like. Um, it's free for my Platinum members who pay a premium subscription. It's, it's just it's less than £50 a month and you get to come to all my classes. I've, I've got one very soon, actually. Um, normally I've, I've finished by now, but um, yeah, I've got one in, at half past 11 today, 11 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and yes, there's a Saturday workshop. It's also free to attend for my gold members. Just £25 a month, you get access to all recordings of every class I've done and uh, every work, every Saturday morning retreat workshop. And you can turn up for the live event for free. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's meant to be view only. That's, that's the only caveat for gold members. Uh, cheapest chips, uh, or you can just drop in. It's a, it's a very, it's a, <laughs> a very good value workshop anyway it's uh, less than 30 quid for a workshop or 15 quid if you want to do view only this saturday it's the last one of the year so if you want to check in with me and have a uh, direct experience of something and sign up um places are limited uh, well um uh, interactive places are limited but you can always get a view only one for for the half price okay um Yes, I th yes, I'm going to take a week off next week. So no yoga solutions next week. I hope that was useful. Feel free to share this around Facebook. I might leave it up a bit longer than usual because um, I'm not doing one next week. But um, at some point, it will be transferred across the website for my silver members. Talking of which, if you want um, uh, cheap access to to uh, some fantastic content, all you get access to all my yoga solutions live broadcasts for as long as I can remember. And there's got to be hundreds of them, I don't, I don't know. Um, they're all up there, accessible with the titles and content, so you, you can scroll through and find something that, that floats your boat and just practice with it. And uh, uh, yeah, fantastic value. And, and you get um, access to uh, the ultimate anti-stress course, which is contains a whole load of uh, 10 to 30 minute deep relaxations lifted from various classes, the, the best relaxations I've done. So, um, and that's for less than a tenner a month. And um, so, you know, support yourself. Come, come and if, if, if you resonate with my work, then just daily exposure, regular exposure will change your life. So, um, and, and I'm always there. Um, if, if, if you have a question, you can email me, and probably more usefully, you can book a, a free 15-minute one-to-one consultation with me. And you can tell me what's going on, and I'll have an idea of what you need to do to help um, things out. So, uh, you know, with nothing to lose. Just um, book, a, book your free 15-minute consultation if you want some help with something, okay? And I, I'm more than happy to help. All right, so um, until the new year, I am Mark J. Aquaviva. This was your Yoga Solutions Live. Um, I'm signing off until the new year. Much love to you all. Happy Christmas. <laughs>